afternoon or whatever. Our short and sweet camcast will be short indeed. Our topic for this camcast is work planning and Gantt charting. We'll cover what's in a work plan and how to depict the work plan graphically by using a Gantt chart. I'm sure that most of you have had prior experience with work planning as we use it for organizing many types of activities including those of our work and our daily life. In this short campcast we'll cover the basics and then you'll be ready to develop and use work plans and Gantt charts to achieve the goals and objectives of your program. Because work planning is familiar, before we start, I'd like you to pause the camcast and write down on a piece of paper or on your computer three elements that are always included in a work plan. Then hit the pause button again and continue with the camcast. If you wrote down activities, responsibilities, and time, you were right on the mark. Your work plan should show what activities you plan to take to reach your goals and objectives. Who will carry out these activities? When the activities will take place? And it's a good idea to also include what resources will be needed, both human and material, for each of the activities you plan. Work plans provide a framework for planning and serve as a guide for carrying out the activities of the program during a specified time period. A detailed work plan is an essential component of a proposal because it describes the schedule of activities and the responsibilities that are planned to achieve the goals and objectives of your program. Once you have a work plan, you can create a graphical description of information in the plan in a Gantt chart. Although now regarded as a common charting technique, Gantt charts were considered revolutionary when they were introduced. Having a computer makes Gantt charting extremely easy. You can make your own or find and learn how to use many of the powerful desktop applications for project managers and project schedulers. In fact, it's a good idea to learn a good project management program if you're going to be managing project activities in the implementation phase. Here's an interesting point of history. The first known Gantt chart was developed in 1896 by Carol Adamecki. He called it a harmonogram. But as luck would have it, he was a Russian speaker and he didn't publish in the English literature. So Henry Gantt, who designed his chart around 1910 and popularized it in the West, got the credit. He also got the name associated with the chart. You can see in the graphic on this slide that activities are listed on the left, the time scale is depicted across the top, and each line of the box in the box corresponds to an activity. Here is an example of a Gantt chart that's being used as a project implementation tool. The gray bars show the original time estimated for each activity. The original time has been revised based on the reality of implementation, the weight bar, and the actual time for implementation of the activity is noted by the diagonal hatched bar. So that's it for work planning and Gantt charting. You'll have an opportunity to apply these concepts to your program in class tomorrow. We'll be looking forward to seeing you then. Until then, take care and be well.